So while I was setting the bulkheads in this footing, I happened to notice three really good examples of three different grain orientations in these two by four templates. This is coarse grain. That is, there's about four growth rings per inch. That's terribly coarse. That's rapid growing second growth Douglas fir. But that's vertical grain orientation. You see that? The growth rings are perpendicular to the long side of the board. That's vertical grain. That's the most stable board that you can buy as a vertical grain board. Look at this next board. How cool is this? They just showed up. This is rift sawn. That is, the growth rings are at approximately a 45 degree angle to both the wide face and the narrow face. That's pretty good. But the real improvement here is how tight that grain is. Can you see that? That's probably eight growth rings per inch. This is probably 12 growth rings per inch. That's moderately fine grain Douglas fir. Really fine grain Douglas fir will get into the dozens of growth rings per inch. And then this last board, check this out. That's classic flat sawn or slab grain, and it's coarse. One, two, yeah, four growth rings per inch. Very coarse, kind of weak compared to the tight grain, but it's very classic that the growth rings are at 90 degrees to the narrow face of the board, tangent, more or less, to a line drawn parallel to the wide side of the board. So in this age of most, much, most of our lumber coming from second growth or third growth timber, the trees are smaller in diameter and so a larger proportion of the boards have the heart in it. Can you see that? What about there? That's what the heart looks like when it's captured in the, in the end of a board. The heart is inherently unstable. There are radial stresses around a heart, see where everything's growing around it in a nice tidy circumference, and then when you cut the side of that circumference open, look what happens. It wants to split. Not only does it want to split, but it wants to twist around the heart. You walk out onto a job site or into a, a lumber yard and you see a board that's twisted like the propeller on an airplane. If you pick it up, I will bet you, I don't know what I would bet you, but it would not be a small bet, that every twisted board you pick up is gonna have the heart in it. Heart center, boxed heart. Try to avoid it if it's a board that needs to remain stable, flat, straight, um, predictable for a long period of time. There's about four ways that a board will um, move as it dries. It'll bow, and that is, it'll take a bend in this direction with the wide face um, perpendicular to the bend. It'll crown which is, it will bend in this direction. Harder for a board to do that, but they'll do it. And that is, bend with the narrow face perpendicular to the bend. It'll twist, it'll rotate. Usually that's around a heart center. And you've got cup that, that a board will twist, particularly a wide board, it'll deform, it'll kind of tighten towards the, the smaller circumference growth rings. So when you're framing particularly, but even in forming, it's just a good idea to get in the habit of checking for crown. This board has a little bit of crown up. Typically you put the crown up in a floor joist or a rafter or in a stud, you put the crown to the outside. We're gonna crown this two by eight up and see how much more dirt I've gotta dig out. None, we did great.